All right. Unexpected late night stream tonight. Hopefully we'll get a few people joining us. I know this was not expected or advertised, but my wife is away at a scrapbooking retreat this weekend, and I have nothing else to do on a Friday night. My kids are all sleeping. I get to sleep in tomorrow morning because I don't have to get up until 8.30 to get my son ready for a cross-country meet. So it's time for a little streaming. So we're going to play Chancellorsville, the union side, which, you know, in theory, you would think that would be the more difficult. Maybe I'll do the Confederates because, uh, you know, part of me says, well, the Confederates won this battle, so I'd rather play the union and change history. But at the same time, I mean, as the union, you've got like a, a two to one advantage in manpower. So I don't know. So you guys let me know what you think. Um Astros and Rays go into the distance. Oh, man, Astros have won three in a row. My goodness. Better than my Indians have done, Zach. Um, so let me know what you guys think. Should I be the Union or should I be the Confederacy? Who should I? Who should I? I was going to take the Union and and give the Confederates the max bonus so they'd be really hard to break. If you give them a plus 50, they, they don't break very easily. They're, they're pretty hard to, to drive off. So I don't know. Dawson, arm bruster. Hey, it's great to have you. Fighting Joe time. Uh, do the CSA. Everybody's saying I should go Confederate. I don't know what you guys think. I don't know what my delay's like either, so I'm going to take a look and see. I don't know if I still have it set to really short or if I... I think it might have gone back to long again because I'm using older settings. All right, everybody says CSA. All right, CSA it is. We'll do the CSAs. I'm not going to give him any bonus then because he's out. He's got me outnumbered two to one. Well, maybe we'll give him a little bonus. I don't want him to be that easy to beat. Alt history. Yeah, I mean, alt history is fun, but it would definitely be hard as the Confederates, I think. So let's do it. Hey, Nathan, how's it going? Good to see you. Yeah, I haven't played a historic battle for a while, and I've never played the historic battle of Chancellorsville uh, on either side, actually. So I'm kind of excited about this. We'll see what happens. Uh, this is also my last stream before I get my second monitor, I, monitor hooked up. I got a second monitor, but I'm still waiting for my cord to arrive um, I forget what it's even called. It's not an HDMI cord, but it's a it's a real similar to HDMI, uh, and it's the cord that I need for the for the second output on my video card, so I can run the two separate monitors, and that way I can run the stream that way without having to use my laptop. Nathan, what's your question? If Stonewall Jackson survives, I guess we get this alt history. That's right. Well, I'm not going to send him on any late night recon missions out past North Carolina troops that are going to mistake him for Union Cavalry. So, We're just waiting. It does take a while to load the, uh, load the battle, so I'm still waiting on that. Almost there, though. I'd have to eat a cannonball for true historical accuracy. Hey, Edward, thank you. Yeah, that was uh, I was pretty excited about that. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar or haven't already heard, uh, I have been asked by the developers of this game to make the official in-game tutorials. Um, hopefully working on that soon. I'm waiting for instructions from them. They're supposed to be giving me some, some scripts to follow. Um, I, I get to kind of do it my own way, but they've got some you know talking points and things that they specifically want me to touch on, and they want me to do them in like 10 to 15 minute chunks, the videos. Uh, they're also going to be showing me kind of some of the behind the scenes of how the game operates, like how the AI thinks in the game. Uh, so, uh, Zach, I am never going to like the Astros. <laughs> Even if I stopped liking my team, the Indians, I would definitely not root for the Astros. Sorry. Um, the 11th Corps under Oliver Howard, could they have been placed better? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, they were placed perfectly for the Confederates, but uh, they were hanging out in the open. They didn't have their flank anchored, which was the problem. Um, they were a sitting duck for a flanking attack. 
Uh, they were definitely in a bad position. Oh, yeah, I did say Union Stream. Let's fix that. Ah, thank you for pointing that out. All right, it is fixed. How happy am I with the game in its current state? Um, I am much, much happier now than I was two months ago. I tell you, the week it came out, I was so excited. I don't know that I've ever been as excited for a game. Uh, and about three days in, I found myself getting so frustrated because it kept crashing. Uh, I couldn't get the campaign to work. I, it was just too easy. It, you know, it just was really disappointing me. But they have been so on top of these updates. And the game now, it, it's not even recognizable compared to the game it was when it first came out. And so that gives me a lot of hope because they've still got this whole roadmap uh, of what they're going to plan to do in the game. And they haven't even started with the roadmap yet. All they've been doing so far in these last couple of months uh, since it came out is fixing all the major issues. Uh, I've never been, you know, I've played several uh, early release games and I've never been a part of uh, an early release game where the developers were so on top of, so engaged, so quick to throw out the fixes that people are asking for. So um, I'm excited about that. So I feel like... Um, that's a good thing. So let me let me go ahead and get these guys started, and then I can get back to answering some of your questions and stuff. Um, let's take a look and see. I mean, obviously, we don't have a lot of our troops to start. This is one of those battles where folks kind of come in as you go along. Uh, so let's see. We got one hour till McClaw's division arrives, two hours for the artillery reserve, three hours for the second corps, four hours for Stewart's division. And likewise, the same thing's going to happen on the Union side. Actually, we've got 30 hours until the first corps and the second division arrive, so most of his force is already here. Ever thought about being a Reds fan? No, you know, I've never really considered being a fan of anybody but the Indians. I, I, I live exactly halfway uh, between Cleveland and Pittsburgh, so, you know, um, when it comes to football, we're pretty evenly divided in this area between the Steelers and the Browns. But I would say baseball, it's probably about 80-20 for the Indians where I live. Um, so as a, as a young kid, when I first started playing baseball when I was five years old, I was a Pirates and Steelers fan. Uh, and then I got old enough to think for myself and quickly became a Browns and Indians fan. Uh, so Nathan, you say you feel like Hooker wasn't the general for the Army. Lincoln didn't really find that general until Meade. Um, and Meade was decent. I think Reynolds would have done a good job. Honestly, I think the general he needed, the closest thing he could have gotten to Grant in the East would have been Phil Kearney. But Phil Kearney was killed uh, during the second Bull Run campaign uh, at Chantilly. Uh, but I think he was the guy. And I think he probably would have been the guy uh, instead of Burnside in 1862 if he hadn't been killed. And, and Hooker, you know, think about this. Hooker redeemed himself because he, he got relieved of command of the Army of the Potomac, but he ended up having a significant role in the Western theater for the rest of the war uh, and did pretty well. Uh, Grant speaks very highly of him. I've been, I've been uh, going through Grant's autobiography, and he speaks very highly of Hooker. You know who he doesn't speak highly of is George Thomas. Um. He has a lot to say about Thomas being a, a good soldier uh, when he's on the defensive and when he doesn't have to take a lot of initiative. But whenever he had to really take initiative and kind of go after somebody, he was pretty slow. Fitz John Porter maybe would have been decent. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know enough about Fitz John Porter to know that. I know he pretty much didn't have much of a role after um, 1862. And yeah, I mean, Hooker, yeah, I don't think Hooker was a bad commander. I think he just got uh, got whipped at Chancellorsville and he panicked. Uh, and, and, and even Hooker himself, he said, you know, I think the quote was something like, I just lost confidence in Joe Hooker. Zach, I don't know how accurate that is um, about it being Stonewall's plan or not. Um 
Honestly, I'm not sure. I think it was probably a collaborative, collaborative effort. And honestly, Stonewall Jackson, for all his mythology, um, he had as many bad moments as he had good ones. I mean, he was pretty terrible in the Seven Days campaign, uh, coming right off of his victories in, uh, in the Valley. Hey, Hendrix, thank you. I appreciate that. Glad you could stop by and say hi. I think the the Union's best chance to win the war before they got Grant was 1862, the, the Seven Days. Um, although, uh, Fredericksburg, there was a chance there if they had gotten across the Rappahannock River and gotten between Lee's Army and, uh, and Richmond, which they could have. And likewise, uh, Grant came really close to taking Petersburg in uh, July of 1864. That brilliant maneuver of crossing the James River when he did. Um, just a couple of things went wrong. It was kind of a fluke uh, that they ended up not being able to get there in time. Yeah, Alex, I, I think, I, I don't even know if it was him disliking him personally because I don't think Grant disliked too many people. Um, oh boy, I didn't realize that we were going to run into him right here. Let's slow down. All right, hopefully we're on initiative so that they'll get into battle line and start fighting. And Lafayette McClaws just arrived, so that's good with 8,700 men. Um, I don't think Grant disliked too many people. I think he, Grant was a very aggressive commander, and Thomas wasn't. And I think that their styles just didn't mesh. Same problem that Grant and Sheridan had with I think that's why Grant loved Sherman and Sheridan so much, because they were um, kindred spirits in terms of how they led. Um, but uh, same thing with um, Governor Warren. Uh, Grant speaks very highly in his autobiography of Governor Warren as a person and as a competent commander. But again, same thing. When it came to being aggressive and taking initiative, Warren wasn't his guy. And I think he supported Sheridan's uh, relieving of Warren under those circumstances. So we've got a battery that's moving in on our flank over here. So I'm going to move Mahoney up there to deal with him. Most underrated generals from the U.S. and the CSA. Underrated on the uh, Confederate side, Patrick Claiborne. Uh, although I, I, I don't know if you could say he's underrated because a lot of people rate him as one of the best Confederate commanders. He's probably the best Confederate commander who never rose to high command uh, in the Confederate Army. Um, underrated on the U.S. side. That's a good question. Honestly, I think... I think Strong Vincent would have ended up being a significant commander late in the war if he hadn't been killed at Gettysburg. Uh, I like Strong Vincent a lot. He has a cool story. Um, he's local to me. He's from Erie, Pennsylvania, which is just you know about an hour up the road from me. Uh, he's buried up there. All right, let's see where everybody else is at. But let me think uh, about that a little bit, about on the Union side. Let's grab... Where's McClaws? So we're going to have to get McClaws. In. Oh, there's some divisions or some brigades coming in on this side too. So we're going to throw McClaws' whole division over here, I think. And in that case, I think we can probably go ahead and keep Mahoney here with the rest of his division. Yeah, Phil, but of course the Army of Northern Virginia had to keep part of that corps over at uh, Fredericksburg to keep the Union occupied. I, I'm a, Alex, I'm a big fan of James McPherson. So was Grant. So was everybody. I think, And I think James McPherson would have been President of the United States if he had not been killed in Atlanta. Uh, my, my ancestor Samuel Hughes, who was in the 20th Ohio, uh, was in McPherson's corps in the Vicksburg campaign and then later in his army. Ooh, Lockwood. Yeah, Lockwood was in the... Um, I can't remember if it's the 6th or the 12th Corps. 
at Gettysburg. Yep, she had to write. McPherson was highly regarded on both sides. Um, yeah, I, I think very highly of McPherson. Another Ohio general. We love our Ohio boys. Sherman, Grant uh, from Ohio. Custer's from Ohio. I can't remember where Sheridan's from, but I don't think he's from Ohio. Of course, it's funny because Sherman was the exact opposite of Grant in terms of upbringing. You know, Grant was this very kind of uh, low-key, uh, didn't want to go to West Point. When he found when he found out his father had gotten him into West Point, he told him he didn't want to go, and he and he found himself hoping that something would go wrong, so he didn't have to go. Um, Grant or Sherman, on the other hand, was um, his adopted father um, was a senator. His brother ended up a senator. He had a lot of political connections. Of course, so did Grant. Grant got his position because of a political connection, too. Just didn't have the connections that Sherman did. John Gibbon, excellent commander. Second Corps, I think, at Gettysburg. No, Zach, all the presidents are from Ohio, especially after the Civil War. Uh, Abraham Lincoln's the only president from Illinois. I mean, I guess technically Obama, Illinois, but neither one of them were born there. Uh, I think Ronald Reagan's the only president born in Illinois. Oh, boy. Looks like uh, somebody just broke. But no, Ohio and Virginia both have eight presidents. Although technically we both have seven and then we share one. William Henry Harrison was born in Virginia, but um, was elected from Ohio. But um, yeah, after the after the Civil War, there was a string there for a while where um, the only way you got elected president is if you were a Republican from Ohio. Uh, yeah, Reynolds was a good commander, but um, you had Grant from Ohio, uh, followed by Rutherford B. Hayes, who was from Ohio. Uh, in fact, Hayes and William McKinley were in the same regiment, the 23rd Ohio. Um, then Garfield, who was from Ohio, Northeast Ohio, about, he's from Menor, Ohio, which is about an hour away from me. Um, and then you had... See, after Garfield, you had, well, his vice president took over, and then it was Grover Cleveland, who was the one Democrat stretch in there. Then you had Benjamin Harrison, who was from Ohio, and then Grover Cleveland again, and then you had William McKinley, who was from Ohio. Then you had um, Teddy Roosevelt, and then William Howard Taft, who was from Ohio, uh, and then you had Woodrow Wilson, and then you had um, Warren Harding, who was from Ohio. And Harding was so bad that we haven't had an Ohio president since. Um, PRZY06, I don't know how you pronounce that, but um, any news on that? Uh, I am waiting for instructions. Uh, oh, good, we got more coming. Uh, here's the rest of McClaws. Okay. Um, they're supposed to be sending me some instructions with the specifics of how they want me to do those tutorial videos, but my understanding is I should be working on those very, very soon because I think they're ready for me to start doing that. Uh, it's been a couple of days since my last email from him. Dan Sickles. Uh, the entire battlefield at Gettysburg is his monument. Dan Sickles is one of those um, guys who got his position because he helped raise troops. I don't I don't know that he was a, a great commander. He wasn't a great tactician. He was just aggressive. Um Yeah, Rosecrans, um, mistake at Chattanooga, uh, mistake at Chickamauga, I think is what finally did him in. Bigger issue for the CSA, manpower or supplies? Yes, um, both. In the end, that both of those are what did them in, and I don't think you can separate one from the other. Are these guns firing? Oh, Posey's brigade's got an upgrade. Shot 
sharpshooters. Yeah, these guys aren't firing. If I turn them this way, I bet I could at least get them firing over here. We're still waiting. What is going on that is taking these guys so long to get up here? They're all coming down that one road. Hey, Kyler, thank you. I appreciate that. You could say he wasn't a grand tactician. Morgan, yes, I am up late. Zach, thank you. Appreciate both of you guys. I am up late, but uh, as I mentioned at the top of the stream, for those who weren't here at the beginning, uh, my wife is away with her uh, friends at a scrapbooking retreat, and she'll be back on Sunday night. So my kids are all in bed, and so I'm kind of like a, a somewhat of a bachelor for the weekend. So uh, normally I'd probably be you know, hanging out with my wife in bed watching Billions or something. And, um, but she's not here, so I get to do a late night stream. And I'm going to do another one tomorrow for sure. I might even do two tomorrow. We'll see. I also have a video I've got to get up uploaded uh, for workers and resources that I recorded earlier today. Uh, we got to turn these guys because they're going to get nailed. Hey, Keith, how's it going? She had, I agree. Uh, Yule was never the same. And, you know, some guys were great at certain levels of command but bad at others. Yule, Hill, and Hood are all great examples of fantastic division commanders who had no business going to higher command. Uh, Zach, I actually almost streamed War Selection tonight. I'm going to stream War Selection tomorrow. Um, yes, Morgan, exactly. When the cat's away, the mice will play. Um, hey, Captain Flack. Wow, it's got to be, what, like 5 in the morning there? I don't know what time it is here. Yeah, it's almost 5 in the morning there, huh? Yeah, Bl Billions is fantastic. Um, he's going to attack Mahoney before I can get any other troops up here. And that's smart of him to be aggressive. Yeah, two of my favorite actors. we got to get these guys moving faster. Um, Paul Giamatti and Damian Lewis. Love both those guys. That's fair, Alex. Yeah. Um, oh, man. He's going to get nailed. That's really... Uh, now, here's the thing about these historic battles. You'll notice the AI performs much better than he does in the campaign. Uh, because in the historic battles, especially if you leave it on historic AI, they have kind of pre-programmed things that they're supposed to do. Uh, so the AI, you'll notice, functions much more effectively, especially right here, where he's got one, two, three, four, five, well, five for sure with Ruger in the back. Five brigades coming down at Mahoney at once. This is going to get ugly fast. I got a Wofford going fast. I got to get these guys going fast as well. Double time, boys. Double time. I think John Gordon is one of my favorite Confederate generals. I think he was fantastic. And he got to rise to... I think he was a corps commander at the end of the war. Van Dorn was worse than Hood. I'll give you that. Uh, and it's funny how... Um, you know, I've been... Uh, as I mentioned, I've been listening to Grant's... Um, autobiography grant speaks very highly uh of joe johnston as a commander he he felt much stronger about joe johnston's abilities than i think jefferson davis did free state of jones yes i love that of course i love matthew mcconaughey and i love that story they actually talk about that Ooh, we just threw back airs but then Wright got thrown back as well they, they have a little section in Ken Burns' Civil War about, uh, I think they call it Kingdom of Jones. Um, but yeah, cool story. Um, hey, by the way, if you guys haven't already hit that like button, I would greatly appreciate that. All right, so now we're going to need one of these brigades to come in. Oh, actually, we threw back a couple of brigades there, so maybe not. There's Stephen Weed, who was killed two months later, well, a month and a half, well, two months later at Gettysburg, up on Little Round Top. So we're going to move Perry over. He's only got 930 men. 
We're going to give him Iron Discipline. My thoughts on John Gibbon. I think John Gibbon was a, a very good commander. Um, I don't know enough about him, or I don't know that we could say enough about him to, to know how he would stack up against some others. But um, I'm trying to remember. He was, I think he's, he ended up in division command by the end of the war. My wife just texted me, and I think she's bothered by the fact that I didn't respond to her. So there we go. Okay. Yeah, every movie, a lot of those guys, actually, that's one of the things I liked about the Grant uh, miniseries they did on the History Channel. There were a lot of things about it that I, I wish they would have done better or covered more, but they did a good job of showing those guys as they were um you know longstreet jackson hood a lot of these guys were young hood was barely in his 30s um longstreet and jackson were in their 30s a lot of people don't know um i don't know if you've ever seen the uh the the miniseries about the hunley but donald sutherland Kiefer sutherland's father plays beauregard in that movie it's one of the only times I've ever seen Beauregard portrayed in a movie. My opinion of Sterling Price. I've been to his grave in St. Louis. Um, I think he was decent. I, I, again, it's hard to say because we, we never got to see. A lot of these guys, it's so hard to compare. It's like comparing LeBron James and Michael Jordan because they were in different eras. Same thing with, you know, we don't know how some of these generals would have performed in different theaters than the ones that they ended up in. Have I ever played American Conquest Divided Nation? I have not. I don't think. I'd have to, if I did, it was a long time ago. I like James Longstreet. Um, I think he was a good alternative to Jackson. I think it was good. I think it was good for Lee to have Longstreet and Jackson. Um, they were kind of polar opposites and Lee was somewhere in the middle of the two in terms of their philosophies and the way that they, uh, they thought about the war and battles. Jackson was super aggressive. Um, Longstreet much more kind of defensive minded. And I think it was good that they had both those guys. And Zach, worst commanders for both sides, and why is one of them Braxton Bragg? Oh boy. Let's see what the casualties are like so far here. Who just arrived? All right, withdrew. Okay, so, whoa, we only have 13,900 men on the field. The Union has 102,000. We're, uh, we're doing okay on casualties so far. We haven't gotten nearly all of our men yet, though. And he's got 400 guns. My goodness. Siegel's uh, commander, I don't know, did he command the 11th Corps? He was terrible. Uh, Grant did not speak highly of him and his Valley campaign uh, in his biography, autobiography. Andersonville is very good, Blake, I agree. I, I'm a big fan of the Andersonville miniseries. I had two uncles who died at Andersonville. So, uh, Patchwork Pictures, no, I didn't have a lot of time in St. Louis. I was there to speak at a school. Uh, so I only had a few hours. So I, I went to the, the Arch, and um, I went to the two cemeteries that are right next to each other, Bellefontaine, and Calvary Cemetery. Uh, Dred Scott's in one of them. Uh, Sherman's buried there. Almira Hancock, Win uh, Winfield Scott Hancock's wife. Sterling Price. Um, uh, I think it was Clark of Lewis and Clark is buried there. Uh, John Pope is buried there. The uh, Anheuser-Busch families are buried there. I actually did videos uh, from both of those cemeteries. 
Burnside is another one of those guys who um, people forget played a prominent role in the war after uh, his bad leadership of the Army of the Potomac. Uh, he commanded an army uh, in 1864 under Grant, uh, the Army of the James. Uh, and, and it was interesting. I had never thought of it this way before. The reason that Burnside technically commanded an army and was not in command, because he was basically in command of what amounted to a corps. Uh, but the reason that he commanded an army and not a full corps, we got to bring Wofford over this way, uh, and not just a corps under the Army of the Potomac is because he outranked George Meade. So he couldn't serve under him. I had never thought of it that way. But because his rank was higher, you know, his rank was earlier in, in date, uh, and they had the same rank. Mahoney's way out in front. He's going to get torn up. Um, he couldn't serve under him, so he had to have a separate command. David, I appreciate that. Thank you. I, I don't remember Grant really speaking much about Curtis. Uh, and my, the only time he really talked about Buell was in connection to the, um, the Battle of Shiloh. And it sounds like Buell was one of those guys who thought Grant was beneath him and hated the fact that Grant actually had authority over him and thought that he should have been the one in charge at Shiloh. Uh, so it was one of those situations. And, and Grant faced that a lot early in the war. He clashed with Halleck a lot. But they ended up actually working really well together. Uh, and, and to Halleck's credit, remember Halleck was the first general in chief. Um, well, I guess technically McClellan was, then Halleck. Um, but Halleck was Grant's superior for a good bit of the war. Uh, he was his superior in the West uh, and then his superior overall. And then Grant gets promoted over Halleck in 1863, but Halleck kept his job as chief of staff uh, and, and worked really well with Grant. I give him a lot of credit for that, to you know, kind of handle uh, being over somebody that, or being under somebody you used to be ahead of. Uh, same thing happened with George Patton in World War II. Um, guys that he had once been in command over ended up getting bumped over him and he had to serve under him. I'm sorry if I'm missing any of your comments. Yeah, Blake, um, he had the, uh, Burnside had the, the Army of the James coming up the peninsula and then they eventually kind of joined uh, the Army of the Potomac and kind of worked together. Is there a Petersburg scenario? Not yet, but I'm, I would guess they'd probably add one at some point. Do we got anybody else coming? All right, we do have... Oh, these are guys that are breaking. Okay, we have AP Hill's Light Division on the way. That'll be helpful. We'll come up here and we'll smash into Burbank. There goes Mahoney. I'm surprised he lasted as long as he did. I cannot get Wofford. All right, you know what, Wofford? Let's just charge into Burbank, shall we? Well, General Scott was, but I wasn't really thinking about him, Phil. Because uh, Scott really, I mean, he commanded early in the war, but I was thinking about the folks who got prom uh, promoted. Yeah, Jackson and Stewart got along really well. They, I think they were of like minds. Yeah, Omar Bradley is specifically who I was thinking of, who had served under Patton and then got promoted over him. Grant was very humble. Um, honestly, and if you've been around this channel, you might have heard me say this before. Um, but after having gone through Grant's biography by Chernow and now going through Grant's autobiography, um, I am a, a huge um, Ulysses S. Grant fan and will be to the day I die, not only as a general but also as a human being. Grant was a first-class human being. He was a really, really good dude. Um, yeah, he was a patchwork, I would agree. He was humble to the point of almost being self-loathing. And he was flawed. I mean, his alcoholism was definitely an issue. Uh, he was very easily duped by people because he was too easily trusting. But I think he always had the best intentions. Was very devoted to his family. Um, but trusted people too much.
Yes, she had. I, I am talking about the Ninth Corps. Um, I, you know, I mean, obviously, I think the... Oh, why is Cable's artillery right up there like that? Um, I think the most prominent person with whom Grant had a significant feud uh, was McClernand. And that was all on McClernand. McClernand was really full of himself. And um, one of those political generals who uh, only had his position because he was buddies with Abraham Lincoln and Edwin Stanton. He was also a prominent Democrat whose support was desperately desired by Lincoln. No, I agree, Alex. Uh, Grant was not necessarily a brilliant tactician, but he was a great strategist. And he also, I think, better than most, understood... And this comes from the fact that he was a quartermaster during the Mexican War. Grant understood supply and uh, moving an army with supply and making sure you establish supply lines and, and when you could break free from those. And uh, That was one of the reasons why his um, Vicksburg campaign was ultimately so successful. I agree, Blake. Grant did get tarnished by the Lost Causers uh, quite a bit. And I, I'll admit, early on in my uh, study of history, I fell into that trap of thinking, oh, Grant was only successful because he used blunt force trauma to beat uh, the Confederacy into submission with superior numbers. Uh, while that was true, that is not why Grant was successful. It was part of it. And that was just wise tactics on his part to understand that. Alex, yeah, zero. <laughs> I don't know if they wanted to go so far as zero. Is Grierson in the game? I believe he is. He's in there behind Burbank, and he's just going to get slaughtered. It's just taking me forever to get guys up this road, and it's just the Union has so many men to start. I'm not going to probably get through this whole battle during the stream anyway, but it's just more more something for me to do while we talk. All right, we broke green. Yeah, I agree, um, and I think some of what hurt Grant, especially in 1864, was not having... Uh, people in whom he put trust um, having them not having them follow through um, it's one of the things he talks about a lot in the 1864 campaign is his frustration uh, with people who just would not move the way he wanted to but I guarantee you this if Grant had been in command uh, of McClellan's army in 1862 he would have taken Richmond I have zero zero doubt in my mind that Grant would have taken Richmond in 1862 with that army. What happened to the guy? Uh, you're thinking of uh, Kirkland, I think was his name. The, the Angel of Maurice Heights. He was killed at Chickamauga, I believe. Sherman was Grant's bad cop. I like that analogy. I've mentioned this before, but my, my favorite quote uh, about the relationship between those two guys, because Sherman had some serious mental health issues early in the war, uh, contemplated suicide, probably only didn't do it because of his family. Uh, there goes Anderson. Or not Anderson. Anderson's the division commander. I can't see whose brigade that is. Um, but he, he said... Uh, he said, I stuck by Grant when he was drunk, and Grant stuck by me when I was crazy, and we will stick together always. Yeah, Bjorn, that's probably fair. Anyone but Ma Little Mac would have taken Richmond in 62.
Yeah, my the the story of Richard Kirkland's one of my favorite stories from the war because uh, he asked repeatedly for permission uh, to go out over the wall and help the uh, the wounded Union soldiers and and finally he was told by his commanders that we're not going to give you permission you, if you do it you do it on your own and so he took the chance and he did it. What did Lee doing his four, five years after the war? Yeah, he was the president of. Uh, what was then called Washington University, it became Washington and Lee University in Link Lexington, uh, and that's actually where he's buried. He's buried in the chapel there uh, on campus. I've been there. Uh, it's right down the road from Virginia Military Institute, um, where Stonewall Jackson was a professor. No, I don't believe uh, Polk was related to uh, former President Polk. Uh, Richard Taylor, however, who was a high-ranking Confederate commander, was the son of Zachary Taylor, who was a, a president. And John Tyler, former president, uh, was actually elected to the Confederate Congress, but died before he could serve. Yeah, a lot of people are answering the questions that people are asking um, before they hear me answer them because there's a delay between what I'm saying and what you guys are seeing. Man, all these guys are just getting stuck on this road. Is that Stuart coming in from this side? Excellent. Oh yeah, you are close if you're in Front Royal. What divisional or brigade commander in the 11th Corps do I have a high opinion of? Um, Adelbert Ames. And I, I'm not the only one because Ames ended up um, getting pretty high command late in the war. Who got killed just now? Barksdale has fallen. He died two months early because he died at Gettysburg historically. Um, where is Barksdale? Oh, he's right here. Um, yeah, Adelbert Ames who actually was the original colonel in charge of the 20th Maine. Uh, by the Battle of Gettysburg, he was promoted to a brigade command in the 11th Corps. Did pretty well at Gettysburg, I think. Ended up getting a division command. He might have even commanded a corps. I can't remember, late in the war. But then he was later on a senator and a governor. Uh, I think he was governor of Mississippi after the war. Yeah, in fact, um, you'll see Adelbert Ames portrayed in in the movie Gods and Generals. He's you know he's the guy commanding um, Joshua Lawrence Chamberlain. And interestingly, that actor uh, who played Ames in Gods and Generals played one of the privates in Gettysburg uh, in the um, Second Maine. One of the guys that's mutinying or part of the mutiny group. Division was his highest command? Okay. But he ended up a, a senator and a governor after the war. But Grant talks a lot about Ames uh, during his autobiography. Well, yeah, Ames would have been in the Peninsula Campaign, but he would have been a brigade commander. Um, actually, or not a brigade commander, a, a um, regimental commander. Oh, I think Francis Barlow was a very good division commander. He was a young guy, one of those young guys. Did they fix the invincible artiller artillery? Yeah, I mean, I've taken out artillery plenty of times in this game. Uh, you can take it out and then um, actually capture it. I actually had a, in my campaign the other day a situation where, um, where Hood sent out some skirmishers to grab some artillery in front of his lines. Yeah, Ames was one of the last general officers from the Civil War to die. Hey, Charlie Mack. Uh, I don't know when uh, the next patch is coming out. They aren't announcing dates for patches anymore because uh, they're doing, like, um, working patches, so to speak, builds. 
1933, that sounds right. Yeah, Ames, Ames was a, a brigadier general at Gettysburg, but he was a division commander later on. Yeah, I agree, Berenger was a better long street. Um, who's the guy? The guy that played Pickett in Gods and Generals was also, um, he was a courier in Gettysburg. One of the things, the only thing I really didn't like about Gettysburg as far as the casting, besides the fact that they cast Patrick Gorman as Hood, who was way too old to be Hood. Um, I mean, other than that, I thought he played Hood fine. Martin Sheen was way too short to play Lee. Lee was six feet tall. Lee was a tall dude for that time. Um, In-game when you capture guns. That's an excellent question. I don't know the answer to that. I know you use them for that battle, but beyond that, um, I'm not entirely sure that there's a way to know whether or not you keep them beyond that. Got to give these guys iron discipline since they lost Barksdale. Yeah, Nathaniel, that's what I was just saying a little bit ago. I think uh, Longstreet and Jackson were perfect kind of um, north and south poles for Lee, so to speak. Because uh, they had, they both brought something very different in terms of their mindset. Uh, and I think losing Jackson hurt him in that way. Do I like Robert Duvall? Yes, I did like Robert Duvall as Lee. Um, I've never really seen somebody play Robert E. Lee where I was like, yes, that's Robert E. Lee. That's who I think of. Um, I, I do feel that way about Berenger as um, Longstreet. Like, whenever I think of Longstreet, I think of Tom Berenger. I don't think of Robert Duvall or um, Martin Sheen when I think of Robert E. Lee, and I, I honestly can't think of a time I've seen a portrayal that really impressed me in that way. Uh, I've seen others portrayed. I like the guy who plays Grant in the Grant miniseries that was on the History Channel. Um, I think he fits him better than some of the people I've seen play him. Although Rip Torn as Grant was pretty cool. Um, I'm trying to remember which movie that was in that Rip Torn played Grant. Um, I think it was North and South that he plays in. Uh, the guy from... Um, it was in Major League that plays the the manager of the Indians in Major League. He played Grant in, in a series, too, and I can't remember which one it was. Yeah, I agree. They do kind of exaggerate. And another thing that people don't realize, um, Robert E. Lee did not have the, the long white beard that you see in pictures at the beginning of the Civil War. He didn't have that. He had a mustache. And his hair was still pretty dark. It turned white, and he grew the beard at the start of the war. Uh, and yes, Sam Elliott as Buford. Oh, fantastic. I love Sam Elliott in anything. But yeah, as Buford, I loved him in that role. Absolutely loved him. I liked Brian Mallon as Hancock. I thought that worked. I liked the guy, um, Richard Jordan, who played Armistead. I thought that worked. And of course, he died before the movie even came out. I love um, Stephen Lang as Stonewall Jackson. That works for me. That works for me a lot. I think he captured Stonewall Jackson exactly as I think of him. Yes, there are forts in the game. Uh, I will say this. Um, if you saw the, the Grant miniseries they did on the History Channel, one thing they definitely got wrong is how they portrayed Grant and Lee's interaction at Appomattox. They show it as kind of very cold, um, and they show Lee as kind of like almost looking at Grant like he was beneath him uh, and acting like he didn't remember him from Mexico and all that stuff. Grant's autobiography, Grant... Uh, goes into great detail about how cordial and how friendly it was and how they kept kind of getting off topic and just having a very friendly talk and, and getting along great. And that every so often Lee would kind of remind him of why they were there and kind of get them refocused back on business. And according to Grant, Lee did remember him from the war and remembered him quite well, according to Grant's autobiography. Worst brigade commander, Brockenbro or Joe Davis? 
I don't think Joe Davis was a bad commander. I think we all remember him for one really bad moment uh, leading his brigade into the railroad cut at Gettysburg. Otherwise, I don't think he was terrible. All right, so we're starting to break the Union finally. I don't know why these guys... I, I gave them orders to come down here. Poor Mr. McLean at Appomattox. Yep. Moved away from Manassas to get away from the war and ended up having the war in the east end in his parlor. Iverson was terrible. I, I absolutely agree. But is there a worse performance of any general than Ledley at the crater in 1864 for the Union? Uh, and that was probably the worst mistake that Meade ever made. When Meade took out the... Um, or maybe was it Ledley's division? I can't remember. There were two division commanders involved uh, at the crater. One of them was supposed to lead the attack with his African-American division. Uh, and they changed it at the last minute. And then the other guy who went in basically got drunk, sent his troops ahead. Um, but that whole debacle with the crater, what a mess that was. So speaking of uh, relationships, somebody just mentioned about uh, Joe Davis being Jefferson Davis's nephew. Um, you know, Jefferson Davis's first wife was uh, the, uh, the daughter of Zachary Taylor. Uh, of course, she passed away early. Um, so he was an ex-brother-in-law to Richard Taylor. Uh, and then Henry Halleck was married to Alexander Hamilton's granddaughter. Um, who else was there? There were a lot of relationships like that. Um, Jeb Stewart's father-in-law was a, a Union colonel. And a lot of people think, uh, I'm glad she I brought up Pickett. A lot of people think Pickett was relieved of command for uh, his performance at Five Forks. He wasn't. Uh, from everything I've studied, Pickett just didn't have a command after Five Forks because most of his men were captured. But he was never relieved. He was still with the Army. He was still with Lee at Appomattox on April 9th. And a lot of people don't know this, too. Uh, after the surrender, Grant and Lee actually met a second time. Um, I, don't, I can't remember if it was that day or the next day. They met between the lines on horseback and had a whole conversation uh, on, on horseback. Yeah, patchwork. Uh, but those black troops were were trained for that for that specific role, and they would have done great. But yeah, I, I see what you're saying. What do I think about First Corps commanders um, at Gettysburg? Solomon Meredith, who commanded the Iron Brigade. Um, Stannard. Stannard was not in the First Corps, I don't think. Um, wasn't Stannard in the Second Corps? Because he was there at the angle, at, uh, or at the center, um, during Pickett's charge. Um, Lysander Cutler. Uh, I had an ancestor who was in Cutler's brigade uh, in the 56th Pennsylvania. Yeah, Mary Todd Lincoln had uh, brothers who fought in the Confederacy. Has anyone asked me to command, explain what the conditions of the battle were like? No, but you know that's something I don't think we can ever fully grasp. And you're right. The smells, the the powder, uh, the black that would have been all over people's mouths from biting off the cartridges. Uh, yeah, there's so many things we don't think about and you don't really see portrayed, I think, well in most movies. Limbs flying in the air. I remember reading about, I don't know if it was Antietam, they found an arm in a tree that was mummified that had been blown off of somebody and went up into the tree and got stuck there. Non-general CO, favorite non-general. Um, oh, I'd have to think about that. Big fan of uh, Alonzo Cushing, what he did at Gettysburg. No, Phil, I'm not thinking of Webb at the center. I'm thinking of Stannard, who commanded the Vermont, the Paper Collar Brigade. He went out on the flank 
on the on the left flank of the Union Army, it would have been the right flank of Pickett's division. He went out, advanced his brigade, and fired into Pickett's division. And it was one of the reasons why they suffered so many casualties is because Stannard took his brigade out. Hey, Neil, how's it going in Perth, Western Australia? Must be, uh, is it afternoon for you there right now? Grant actually thought very highly of Mosby, and they got along well after the war. I think Longstreet served in Grant's cabinet, or not his cabinet, he was a diplomat, like the ambassador to Turkey or something. Appreciate that, Neil, thank you. Chamberlain and Shaw, I, I, I love both of those guys. Huge fan of Joshua Lawrence Chamberlain. Interesting guy, really interesting guy. So is Robert Gould Shaw. Uh, he was young, so we never really got to see what he could do. But uh, Glory is one of my all-time favorite movies. Man, I just absolutely love that movie. Okay, so you're exactly 12 hours ahead of me, Neil, because it's 12.30 a.m. here. What did Grant think of Lee as a commander? Um, he respected him, but I don't think he bought the myth of... Invincible Bobby, Bobby Lee like a lot of people did. But he had known Lee a long time. I mean, he knew Lee all the way back to the Mexican War, and Lee was on, I think, Taylor's staff at the time. So Lee was always thought highly of. You know, um, during the uh, lead-up to the Civil War, right when, before the Civil War began, Lee was lieutenant colonel uh, in, I think it was the 2nd Cavalry, and his commanding officer, his colonel, was Albert Sidney Johnston. Uh, so those guys were the colonel and lieutenant colonel of the 2nd Cavalry. Yeah, D.A. Hill ha was one of those guys that in this game would have had a little uh, feud symbol next to, his, next to his name. Let's see what the casualties are like right now. Good night. Already 16,000 casualties, and we haven't even started in this battle yet, and we're not going to get that far. And a lot of people don't know this about the, um, yeah, ambassador to Turkey. That's what I thought. Um, about the 54th Massachusetts. The 54th Massachusetts was not made up of a bunch of guys from Massachusetts. Because it was one of the first, and it wasn't the first, but it was one of the first, the 54th and 55th Massachusetts. Because they were among the first nationally recognized um, combat regiments to be raised, uh, colored regiments. They brought men from all over. I live in Northeast Ohio, and Salem, Ohio, which is a town of just a few thousand people, it's about 20 minutes from me, had like four guys that were in the, uh, the 54th Massachusetts. Um, so, the, I mean, they came from all over the place. If you look at the roster, they were from every state. Can this be set up to run the actual battle the way it was played out in history? I don't think so, because I don't think you can... You have to take a side, and, and um, you have to give orders. I don't think there's a way to just kind of sit back and watch it. Actually, let's bring these guns back here a little bit. I want to bring Fitz Lee up to... Actually, I'm going to have them take out this these batteries. We got the two Lee boys here, the cousins. Robert E. Lee's brother, Smith Lee, uh, was a naval officer in the Confederacy. And I can't remember which one's which. I think Fitzhugh Lee is his son, who became the governor of Virginia after the war. And then W.H.F. Lee, I think, is Rooney Lee. That's Robert E. Lee's son. Uh, Lee, like a lot of generals during the war lost a daughter during the war, an adult daughter who died. Uh, I think in like 62. I think Longstreet lost children. I know Sherman lost at least one or two children during the war. Hood lost a bunch of his children and the same, I think, the same yellow fever epidemic that ended up killing him in the 1870s.
Yeah, Sidney Smith Lee, I think. I think he went by Smith. But yeah, Sidney was his first name. Well, Lee was pro-Union, Phil. Um, you know, if you really want to get down to it, Robert E. Lee was pro-Union. Uh, he just... If Virginia had stayed in the Union, Robert E. Lee would have stayed in the Union. Uh, I don't think there's any, any question about that. Did I accidentally order my battery to charge and hunt my cavalry. Why? Oh, I, I, I'm really not paying enough attention. Normally I would have to tell all these guys to not use roads so that they didn't go up like that. I've not been to enough of the Petersburg battlefield. My wife's great-great-great-grandfather lost a leg at... Um, Chaffin's Farm. Uh, he was in the 2nd Pennsylvania Heavy Artillery, which was actually the largest regiment in the war. Um, he was one of those heavy artillery regiments that was pulled out of the forts in Washington and put in the field as infantry. Had like 3,000 men in one regiment. Uh, so they were divided into battalions. And um, he was part of that charge at uh, Chaffin's Farm. Uh, I think it was September of 1864, was captured by the Confederates, and a Confederate surgeon amputated his leg. Um, and that was the end of the war for him. I think he spent some time in, in the prison camp after that before he was exchanged. But yeah, I, I highly recommend, if you ever have the chance to visit battlefields, do it. Uh, I mention this all the time. But my perspective on battles always, always changes when I visit the battlefield. Uh, because to see the field, it changes how you perceive it in your mind. Uh, when I visited Shiloh last year, uh, I was much more impressed with what the Confederates did. Because uh, they were attacking uphill through the woods over terrible terrain. And as much as you look at it on a map, to stand there and actually see the area that Sherman was defending at Shiloh Church, uh, to see uh, what a strong defensive position Pittsburgh Landing was, you get a much better sense. Same thing with um, the attack by the Union at Burnside Bridge. You can see what they were up against and why a couple hundred Confederates from Georgia could defend that position as long as they did. Uh, you get a much better sense of these things when you see the battlefields firsthand. Harper's Ferry is really cool. I was there as a teenager. Sedgwick was very highly thought of, by especially by his men, but I think also by other commanders. I think he was a very good corps commander. He was actually the highest ranking Union general killed during the war. Even though he was a corps commander and McPherson was an army commander, uh, Sedgwick actually outranked him. So Sedgwick was the highest ranking Union officer killed during the war. I have not been to Chickamauga. I need to get there because I had ancestors at Chickamauga. And one place I really want to go, um, I, I, man, I want to get to Vicksburg so bad because um, I had four ancestors who were very involved in the Vicksburg campaign. Um, when, when Sherman tried to take Vicksburg in late 1862, uh, he had this terrible battle. It was a small battle, but it was bloody um, at Chickasaw Bayou. And I had two ancestors in the 22nd kentucky mounted infantry and if you see the picture of their battle flag after the battle it is just ripped to shreds um so that's a place i'd like to visit david that'd be very cool i would love to be out on the gettysburg battlefield at night all right so let's get dh hill moved up here Yes, the panorama. I've been there since they uh, built the new, um, the new uh, visitor center at Gettysburg, and it is really cool. Uncle John to his men. That's right, Shiite. They couldn't hit an elephant at this distance. <laughs> Famous last words. Wilson's Creek and Pea Ridge. Very cool, James. Right. So we got 72 people watching. So uh, if you guys would hit that like button, I would 
greatly appreciate that. And don't forget to subscribe, please, if you're new to the channel. And definitely join us over on uh, Discord. There's always a lot of fun things going on over there. Um, oh, I, already, I had already given AP Hill orders to move, but we're going to go ahead and move him this way. Can I have an Army of Kentucky? You can if you want to create one, absolutely. You can create whatever you want in this game in the campaign. Chickamauga Museum is top notch. Good to know. I, I, I'll definitely have to check that out. I want to get to the Ch Chickamauga Battlefield. I definitely want to get to Vicksburg when I get a chance. I'm so glad I finally got to get, uh, see Shiloh. I've been to Kennesaw Mountain where I had a number of ancestors fight. Um, my fourth great grandmother, my fourth great grandfather who I talk a lot about who was in the 20th Ohio um, under McPherson, um, fought at Kennesaw Mountain and his brother-in-law who would be an uncle to me was killed, uh, well, was mortally wounded at Kennesaw Mountain. He's buried in the Chattanooga Cemetery. Three children to scarlet fever. See, that, Charlie Mack, that's the kind of thing that I think people need to take into consideration when they consider um, consider what's happening uh, in the mind of a general. I mean, how could that not have affected Longstreet? How could you ever be the same being away at war and, and getting word that you lost three children in a scarlet fever, fever epidemic. Lee losing his daughter, I think Anne might have been her name. Mary, I don't remember which one of his daughters it was. Um, that, that has to change you. Uh, Sherman already dealing with serious mental health issues. Having a son that he never even met die. Um, and another one that he did meet that died. Any good feuds? No, I don't think there's any at the moment here. There's a lot of Union units coming in this way, though. Yeah, Zach. Um, yes, uh, as already mentioned by Shiite, uh, that is the reason that North Carolina, Virginia... Tennessee and Arkansas seceded uh, was after Lincoln raised volunteers because uh, in their minds Lincoln was going to invade his own country he was he was invading the south and, and a lot of people ask me about the whole slavery versus states rights thing uh, it's much more complicated than that the politicians who led the south uh, it was about slavery to them but the rank-and-file Confederate soldier did not own slaves. He was too poor to own slaves. He was fighting for states' rights. He was fighting to defend his home. And it was nothing more complicated than that. None of my ancestors who fought in the Confederate Army or my uncles owned any slaves. They didn't. Um, it just wasn't their motivation. Their motivation was the Union sending an army down here to force us to do something we don't want to do. I'm just catching up on on reading the comments here. Oh yeah, Keith, I agree. There's uh, that's one of the reasons why I want to visit the Gettysburg Battlefield at night. We'll see what the casualties are like now. Look at that, uh, ten thousand on the Union, seventy eight hundred on our side. That certainly wouldn't be sustainable for the Confederacy long term. I've lost forty nine guns. He's lost thirty five. Yeah, Phil, you're right. Um, people need to recognize that uh, just like we like to say that World War II happened as a direct result of what happened in World War I, uh, the Civil War was not some issue that just kind of suddenly erupted because Lincoln was inaugurated. There, there was 70 years of things that happened that led to that Civil War. The Civil War became inevitable the moment the Constitution was ratified. Nathan, good point. George Thomas is a prime example. He's a, a 
there's a Virginian fighting for the Union. You had Pemberton, who was a Pennsylvanian fighting for the Confederacy. Sherman was in the South at the start of the war. He was the uh, president of what became Louisiana State University uh, at the time the war broke out. Let's see, it's 1240. I don't know. We'll go a little bit longer. We'll see how this goes for a little bit. Certainly not going to resolve this battle, I don't think. Yeah, the cotton gin. Oh, by 1812, do you mean? Um, yeah, cotton gin was invented around that time. It wasn't it late 1700s, early 1800s, cotton gin? was invented. John Gibbon, North Carolina. Yeah, another good example. A lot of that. Wesley Culp, Pennsylvanian from Gettysburg, who died in the Confederate Army fighting on his family's land. One battle uh, during the Civil War, a minor battle in Eastern Kentucky, um, the 22nd Kentucky Mounted Infantry on the Union was under Brigadier General James Garfield, um, and the 5th Kentucky Mounted Infantry on the Confederate side fought hand-to-hand -hand combat, and I had ancestors in both of those units fighting hand-to-hand -hand against each other. Ken Doggy, uh, I disagree um, with your assessment about there would still be slavery. The South would have gotten rid of slavery. They would have phased it out. They would have had to if they had won the war. Um, and honestly, that that's the mistake that was made. I think if the South had announced their, their secession at the same time announcing, say, a 20-year plan to phase out slavery... You might have seen European intervention, and you might have seen uh, probably one of the biggest weapons in the northern bag of tricks go down the tubes uh, for fighting the war. Hey, Robert, how's it going? Thank Ken Doggy. I appreciate that. Yeah, I mean, it's it's ridiculous to claim that the Civil War wasn't about slavery, um, but like anything, it's the issues, the political issues, are much more nuanced and much more complicated than just saying, yeah, it was it was a war over slavery, because it wasn't a war over slavery for the Union when it started. Uh, that was something that Lincoln kind of made a, a war goal later. Uh, it was a war to preserve the Union. And for, like I said, for most rank-and-file Confederate soldiers, it was a war um, to defend against a northern invasion. Neil, um, they never really used black troops. Um, they, they used a lot of slave labor, and, and Lee tried to get something late, late, late in the war about um, offering slaves a chance for freedom by fighting for the Confederacy, but they weren't used in any substantial way like they were in the Union. Shiite, the Southern elite would have accepted it if it was the only way they were going to sell their cotton. Uh, Zach, it was... Um, state delegations that voted uh, but I think in some cases like in Virginia they did hold a statewide vote um, some states did that some states did a, a vote um, of the people to, to get their opinions on it
Yeah, Benjamin, I think you're probably right about that. Alright, so he's hitting me here. We got more troops coming down. Who's this back here? No, it's uh Pendleton. So Pendleton, um, you know, his son was on the staff of Stonewall Jackson, Sandy Pendleton. And Sandy Pendleton was killed in 1864, I think, in the Shenandoah Valley. Hey, Alan, how's it going? David, you're in southern Idaho. That's cool. Um, I had a great uncle who uh, moved from Kentucky to Pocatello, Idaho. He's buried out there. I got to visit Idaho for the first time last year. I was in uh, Coeur d'Alene. I flew into Spokane. I was speaking at a school in Spokane and had a little bit of time, so I went across the border just so I could say I'd been to Idaho. Why is McCowan way out there like that? Charlie, um, yeah, I mean, if the South, the South would have had a chance if Europe had intervened, but I don't think Europe was ever going to intervene um, because of slavery. Yes, Alan, you're absolutely right. <laughs> Wife's away, so the hubby will play. Zach, you're right. I am getting kind of tired, and i got to get up in the morning and take my son to his last cross-country meet of the season. But I'll definitely be streaming again tomorrow, and I will try to announce those times uh, in advance on the channel. So if you guys, when you subscribe, hit the little notification bell, and I'll also post something over on Discord uh, to let everybody know about those times. But that's why I do these streams. I love just I just love being able to chat with you guys about the war. Um, I love this community that we have where we all, you know, I don't have any friends that I hang out with in person that like the things that I like. Uh, so you guys are kind of that fix for me. Oh, he's coming at me now. Thank you, Morgan. I will. I will tell him that. Yeah, Neil's right. Um, I think the South's strategy in the Civil War was largely the same as the U.S. in the Revolutionary War. It was about um, fighting an enemy that you couldn't possibly defeat on the battlefield alone. You had to outlast him um, until his public grew tired of the war and he got tired of spending the money and spending the lives to fight it. Uh, it worked in the revolution because we got French support without whom we had no chance uh, of winning the Revolutionary War. Uh, and honestly, the Revolutionary War without French support in 1781 was probably on its last legs. I don't know that uh, the United States could have held out much longer. And uh, so that said, that's what the Confederates needed in the Civil War. They just didn't, it just didn't work out that way. Thank you, David. I, uh, I ran cross country in high school and college, uh, so I'm uh, I'm excited to see my son passionate about it and, and doing pretty well for himself as well. All right, we'll do a, a big push to end the battle here to wrap things up. There's Rally Colston, who uh, was part of that big flanking attack. He was also a professor at VMI, if I remember correctly, because that's the one that you have Stonewall Jackson saying to him on the battlefield, Virginia Military Institute will be heard from today. So we're just going to go ahead and charge these guys. We're going to charge into Tyler. Nathan, I'm, I'm glad that, that you and I and all these others are able to have this community where we can talk about this stuff here. A lot of us don't have that outlet to be able to do that. All right, let's see what the numbers are looking like now. 
I imagine we're already pretty close to being over what the casualties were at Chancellorsville. Yeah, we're already over 20,000. But yeah, that's 19% for me and only 12% for him. All right, let's charge into uh, into Candy here. Bark Steel's brigade's still out there fighting, man. They lost 500 men. They lost their brigade commander. Here's uh, Elisha Paxton. He died in this battle. There's a scene in Gods and Generals where uh, Stonewall Jackson's wife gets off the train at Guinea Station uh, where she's coming to see her husband who's been wounded, and she sees uh, General Paxton's coffin sitting there, and she thinks it's her husband's. West Virginia is created illegally. You know, it's hard to fathom for me living here in Northeast Ohio uh, to fathom that the Confederacy at one point was a half hour away from where I live. Because that's how close I am to West Virginia. Is it true Gods and Generals 11th Corps ran like that from Jackson's surprise attack? They did, but they did put up somewhat of a fight. I, it wasn't the complete route that I think some people think it was. Uh, the 11th Corps, I mean, they they did... They, they put up enough of a fight to slow Jackson down. You're Richard M. Nixon on Steam. Um, speaking of Nixon, Richard Nixon's great-grandfather was killed at Gettysburg. Private George Nixon. He was in the, uh, oh gosh, the 73rd Ohio, I think. Richard Nixon has roots here in Northeast Ohio as well. So does uh, so do both Presidents Bush, uh, President Bush Senior and Junior, uh, have roots in in Ohio. Yeah, interestingly, talking about West Virginia, Stonewall Jackson was from the part of Virginia that became West Virginia. Oh no, I just uh, minimized my game here. All right, we're going to charge into these guys, and then I think we'll call it a day. Oh, there's Alfred Iverson. Oh, look out. He's actually a four-star unit in terms of his uh, ex experience. you we Alabamians accept your gift you know we joke here in Ohio about um, Ohio and Michigan fought a war over they call it a war it wasn't really a war um, over Toledo and Ohio lost because we got Toledo McGowan broke. We're gonna we're gonna charge into these guys, try to overrun the last of these Union units that are here. Man, the casualties in this fight. Just imagine the bodies. There's twenty thousand casualties just in this area right here. Twenty five thousand almost. We're about to surpass, um, or we have surpassed Antietam as the bloodiest single day in American history. 
Does Winfield Scott get credit? Um, I think he gets a little credit because he came up with the Anaconda plan, which I think was a good plan. The overall strategy for winning the war. Yes, David. Um, I've been to Nixon's grave out there. Whittier, California, I think that's right. I know it's in, in Southern California near L.A. because I visited his grave when I was out there. Because um, I have this thing where I'm trying to get to all the presidential graves, and I've been to, I think, close to 30 of them now. Including some of the more obscure ones to get to, uh, like Franklin Pierce in New Hampshire and um, Calvin Coolidge's grave in Vermont I've been to. It is well that war is so terrible, yes. We should grow too fond of it. Oh yeah, Grant speaks very highly of Winfield Scott um, during the, uh, the Mexican War, though I think he was more partial to Zachary Taylor in terms of his personal preference of a, of a general, what a general should be. But, Phil, if Longstreet had been at Chancellorsville, then chances are the other Union troops would have been at Chancellorsville. And so I don't know if I, if I would go that far. Who got assigned to battle body cleanup? Actually, interesting you should mention that, and I'll close with this story. Um, one of the other things I was listening to in, um, in going through the audio book of Grant's autobiography, as he tells a story of... Um, the Battle of Cold Harbor and the aftermath of Cold Harbor. Uh, yes, I've been to John Tyler. John Tyler and um, who's the other one that's buried right next to him in uh, Hollywood Cemetery in Richmond? Uh, oh, Franklin Pierce's family story, super sad. What happened to his son? His son was basically decapitated right in front of him in a train accident on their way to Washington where, when he took uh, office. Uh, nothing left to do but get drunk. Yeah, Franklin Pierce, sad, sad story. Anyway, um, and who's the other one buried with John Tyler in Richmond? Monroe. I think it's James Monroe and John Tyler are buried almost right right next to each other up on top of a hill overlooking the, the river. Um, U.S. presidents buried at Arlington. Two, William Howard Taft and John F. Kennedy. Um, anyway, um, uh, Grant sent a letter through the lines to Robert E. Lee. Uh, request re requesting a truce so they could um, go out and get, get to the wounded left on the Cold Harbor battlefield and to bury the dead. And uh, they went back and forth like three or four times because Lee kind of kept, kept rebuffing Grant's offers and Grant's requests to do that. Um, like I think Lee was, sounds like he was concerned that Grant was up to something nefarious and uh, just wanted to get a look at his lines or I don't know what it was, but it took a while to finally make that happen. And Grant expresses a lot of frustration in his memoirs about that because he feels like there were a lot of men who died because they didn't get to him in time because uh, they lay wounded on the battlefield for days uh, while Grant haggled with Lee over this truce to be able to go out and, and get to these men on the battlefield. But yeah, JFK and William Howard Taft are the two buried at Arlington. There's also one U.S. president buried in Washington, D.C., and that's Woodrow Wilson, uh, who's buried at the National Cathedral. Um, who else? I've been to uh, Buffalo, New York, is where Millard Fillmore is buried. Uh, also assassination site for McKinley's assassination. Um, here in Ohio, we have William McKinley buried in Canton. Uh, my wife went to William uh, went to McKinley High School in Niles, which is where William McKinley was born. Uh, my great great uncle built the house that McKinley was born in in Niles. Um, but uh, who else in Ohio? Uh, Garfield's buried in Lakeview Cemetery in Cleveland. Um, Harrison William Henry Harrison. I've been to his grave down near Cincinnati. Um, I think Benjamin Harrison's buried in Indiana. I haven't been to his yet. Patchwork, uh, I don't know which story you're referring to, but um, are you talking about the one between Grant and Lee with uh, Cold Harbor? Um, see, Teddy Roosevelt's buried near New York City, 
Worcester Bay. Uh, Franklin Roosevelt's buried uh, in New York as well. Uh, so is Grant. He's in New York City. Nixon and Reagan are in California. Uh, Johnson's in Texas. Oh, yeah, Bjorn, I've been to Buchanan's grave in Lancaster as well. The only only president from Pennsylvania, which is kind of interesting when you consider the prominent role Pennsylvania had in the early part of the Union. That they only ever had one president. Uh, Virginia, you've got, let's see, Jefferson's at uh, Monticello and uh, Charlottesville. Um, Washington, of course, is in... Uh, Mount Vernon, which I have not been to, even though I've been to D.C. probably 15 times. My daughter's been to uh, Mount Vernon. All hogs in large numbers started eating, eating the wounded. I knew that happened at the wilderness. I wasn't aware that it happened at Cold Harbor as well. Yes, Bush Seniors in Texas. Uh, I've been to the Bush Junior Library in Texas. I've been to the Clinton Library uh, in Arkansas. That was really cool, both of them. Uh, honestly, I think of all the presidential libraries I've been to, I've been to Gerald Ford's grave in, um, uh, what is it, Grand Rapids, Michigan? Um, but we're going to go ahead and wrap up the stream right there, guys. Yes, also the home of uh, John Reynolds, Lancaster. Um, Delaware, we had no presidents, and Biden doesn't count. Well, Biden makes a lot of his, uh, his roots in Scranton, PA, anyway, so... Um, but we'll wrap it up right there, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this as much as I did. We will be back tomorrow with a couple more streams, probably one in the afternoon uh, and then maybe another one in the early evening. But we'll see. I'll, I will definitely post about that and keep you guys informed. Thanks a lot. We'll see you again soon.